<laughs> if you can believe that. Although my parents did a fine job, I just think that, uh, you know, for example, my parents had a full liquor cabinet in the house at all times. It wasn't locked. I, I could I could have gone there any time and, you know, partied with my friends, but I just had no interest in it. Interesting. Um, here's something else you and I have in common. We've both been on 60 Minutes. Oh, really? What were you on for? I was on, when I was a student at UCSB, they came to film a class that I was in, a religious studies course on the, on the war in Vietnam. And uh, one of my instructors, one of the teachers that year, was, it's this enormously popular class uh, taught by a guy named Walter Capps, who's passed away. He, was, he became a congressman, and his wife is still a congresswoman uh, from, in his old seat from Santa Barbara. And uh, uh, let's see, the uh, senator from Nebraska, uh, Bob Carey, was a yeah. uh, instructor the year that I was there. He was a, a Navy SEAL in Vietnam. And so anyway, they, they were filming the course, and I stood up and asked a question. It's this giant 1,500-seat uh, classroom called Campbell Hall, and they filmed me answer, asking the question and the response from the instructors. And so I was on for about nine seconds. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you I were on, on for about two minutes. Yeah, you were on for a little longer. In fact, I watched that piece. It's uh, linked from your website. Uh, and this sort of gets us into this other side of your life, um, which I'm curious as to what aspect it holds for you now. It's your relationship to the porn world. Um, <laughs> uh, LukeFord.com, which was your original website, is now a porn site, but it was originally your gossip about the porn industry site. Uh, there's now LukeFord.net, which is your site, and then Luke is back, which is also a porn site, which is uh, attributed to you now as well. What's the story? Uh, well, uh, in 1995, um, I kept getting thrown out of different acting schools, and I decided I was more suited to solitary pursuits, so I decided I needed to publish a book. And so my first thought was to write a book on how to be a good person, and I wanted to develop some of Dennis Prager's ideas into a book. So I sent him a letter, and he replied negative. So I said, hmm, maybe I'll write a history of sex in film. And that's what I did. And in my arduous research, I was left with thousands of pages of notes. And so when I bought my own computer for the first time in July 1997, I immediately put up a website with my notes. And then people started giving me stories as they were breaking, particularly an HIV outbreak in the porn industry. So I started doing regular news updates, and, and I said, huh, I'm c covering news, but I hear a lot of gossip, too. Let's, you know, let's start melting some of these. And so I started finding out I could make a living by writing a daily update on the sex industry. And uh, that led to many years, about 12 years or told, I think, uh, writing about the sex industry. Well, you also became very friendly with people who work in the sex industry. The uh, I, We should say these aren't necessarily uh, street walkers. When, we when you say the sex industry, you think of you know massage parlors, and we're, we're talking about pornography, specifically video, right? Right, right. Uh, and uh, how close did you become to the, that world and those people, and why are you laughing? Well, I, I did. I'm, I'm laughing because I did make... Um, I did direct one porn movie. In, oh, really? Uh, J January of 1996, I directed a porn movie called What Women Want. This was two, two, three years before the Mel Gibson film of the same name. So I think they ripped off my title. Wow, so that's my, usually my story the other... was somewhat different. Than it's it's usually story. the other way around, isn't it? That they take you know mainstream hit movies and then they pervert the per they they in a perverse way change the words and make it into a porn <laughs> flick. Yeah, shaving Ryan's private. Exactly. Yes. Right. <laughs> uh, well, this one is the other way around. So, uh, huh. I, I I recruited Kimberly Cummings and five guys <laughs> into a little room on like Hollywood and Vine <laughs> and shot this classic porn movie. And but once a philosopher, Mark, twice a pervert. I only did this once, so I only did it for philosophical reasons. Uh, is it good? No, it's horrible. It's the, like the worst porn movie you've ever seen. Uh, were you good as a director? <laughs> no, I <it> totally sucked. <laughs> but it was an experience. It like uh -huh. it gave me, you know, a deeper appreciation for my subject. How did you feel doing it? I felt scared to death and um, <laughs> a little excited, and 
uh, I mean, I got to confess, it was like the greatest feeling to be able to, you know, tell a woman to go, you know, do certain things with, you know, those guys over there. Like, it's such tremendous power to, like, tell people to have sex with each other. It's like, wow. Uh, and uh, the, the movie's still available, I assume? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, do you think, had you stuck with it, that you you could have been a great porn director, or maybe even no, a no, no, no. I only had the intention to to uh, do shoot it the once. very one. Uh huh. And uh, who's for what company was this? Uh, Sunshine uh, Factory Home Video, aka Sunshine Home Video. It's where Seymour Butts also got his start. Uh huh. So. And what's the to- what's the budget for? What was the budget for this movie? Do you know? Uh, f- four thousand dollars. Uh huh. And that, and that's a that's a lot or a little by porn standards. Uh, that's a little. That's a little. Uh huh. And that basically was just the money to pay the actors and yeah. Uh, and, and was it a one camera shoot? Did you hold the camera yeah. and so you one held- camera shoot? I I held the camera <laughs> for much of the time. Though I did have a cameraman there as well. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Um. And uh, so it, it gave you a sense of power, but you didn't want to yeah. do it again because it also made you feel dirty. What? Yeah, yeah, it was like, it was just like way, it was just way too much of a contradiction with my professed ideals. So I just, like, it was fun to do it once, but, uh-huh. you know, once a philosopher, uh-huh. twice a pervert. All right, um, and do you still watch porno? Uh, very rarely. So that was, like, when I when I did the book, I, I had to watch, like, 100 or so. So porn films. So that I was writing a history of sex and film. So I had to write, watch a lot of movies. But uh, you know, after a while, it starts to wear on you. Well, the the sixty minutes sort of used you as a kind of field expert, and you took them on the set of. Uh, it's not a set. It's an outdoor. It's like a, a bunch of little stages, I guess. How, how would you describe where you were taking them? Yeah, it was it was Ron Vogel's set. Ron Vogel was a still photographer in the industry for about 40 years and so he had a house there in the valley they were just looking for a set because they just they just wanted this uh this type of video of me walking around the set with steve croft Mm -hmm. um and so i just walked them around uh some some guy's backyard well i also know how 60 minutes operates which is they take hours and hours and hours of footage and they distilled it down to two minutes and um, my guess is that they asked you a lot of questions and you made a lot of statements. And ultimately what comes off is you saying that people, especially women, in the porn industry generally are in for one film. Uh, they do it because it's a quick buck. And it's usually so damaging to their psyche that they quit after one film. Um, I have a feeling you had a lot more to say than just that. Yes. Um, what was what, what, <laughs> I talked to them for like 40 hours I'll or bet. 50 hours yeah. before they started shooting, and then the shoot was like several hours. So. Uh-huh. And, and do you think that was a fair way to distill what it was that you were trying to impart? It, it was fine. Like, I, I don't ha- you know, I was saying a lot of things, and they they took that one as, you know, I don't, I don't have a strong feeling one way or another. You don't have a strong feeling that they mischaracterized what you were saying, or you don't have a strong feeling about the 40 hours of interview? Uh, I, you know, I knew, what a, I, kn- I knew how they work or how any right. TV news works. Right. You know, they, they take you know, an odd sentence, and right. they'll talk to you for an hour, and they'll take three sentences. So um, I have a certain resignation uh, when it comes to... Uh, when I talk to other journalists, that it's it becomes their story, it's not my story, and they will take. And sometimes I feel like they distort, or sometimes I think they'll take it out of conflict context. Or, but I I, I kind of let it go. I just do it because I enjoy talking to people who are who are smart, and they were certainly a smart group of people. Um, but if you would leave it, after talking to them for forty hours, would you want what they put to be the thing? That, no. no, I didn't no, think so. No. I, I had a feeling that wasn't the case. I don't know why I'm spending so much time dwelling on it, but I, I have a feeling that you wouldn't have been so involved in the industry for the period of time that you did if you thought it was all bad. And the way the quote that is on 60 Minutes of You makes it sound like this is a terrible, terrible thing and it should be stopped. And I don't think that's what you believe. 
Ride night.